Chapter 9 is all about integers, and first we should figure out, well, what in the world are we studying? So integers are going to be uh, numbers with no decimals. So numbers with no or without decimals. Summers with no decimals. Or nice, pretty, normal numbers, if you want to think of them that way. So examples would be like 1 is an integer, or 5, or 3,000. Or 153, negative 2. Anyway, so if you look at those, basically all those numbers don't have a decimal. Those are the numbers we're doing in this chapter. And essentially, this chapter we're looking at how do you add them and how do you subtract them and doing stuff like that uh, without a calculator most of the time. And I want to start out just by looking at a number line. So we have this number line here. All these numbers listed are going to be integers. And in between them on the number line, you'll have numbers that aren't integers. But 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all those are integers. And want to just start by saying the 0. We're going to refer to that as the origin. So I'm going to put a little arrow to it and say origin. Kind of like if you think of a graph. I don't think I'd draw this. And when you had a graph like that, the 0, 0 point there in the middle where I put a dot is the origin. All right, so that's the origin. Second thing, then, is if we go to the right of the origin, I'm going to take and do like a little line there and do an arrow this way. We're going to have all positive numbers. So positive numbers to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all those are positives. If we would go to the left, though, anything to the left of that is going to be a negative number. So negative numbers are on the left. So there we have our negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. And notice that when you have a negative number, you put the little negative sign in front of the number. You don't do that with positives. You don't put a little plus, plus, plus. You just assume it's positive unless something is written in. All right, moving on from there. I want to point out then that the origin doesn't fit a positive number. It's not to the right of the zero. It's not a negative number. It's not to the left of the zero. So the origin is neither positive nor negative. Negative. So neither positive nor negative. All right, and then last but not least, I want to say, well, if you're way over here, this is going to be where you have your bigger numbers. So 7 is going to be bigger than anything that's to the left of it. Um, if you were to have like a million, it's going to have to be way even further over there, like way, way, way over there, because that's way bigger than the 7. And when we have smaller numbers, smaller numbers are way here on the left. Because it's not closer to zero, it's like negative a million, negative a billion, all that. It's going to be much, much, much smaller than zero. Okay, a lot of that's probably repeat, so I'll move on, so I'm not draining your brain cells too much. Uh, it is possible to have vertical number lines as well. And when you have something like that, you get the same sort of stuff. You have your zero in the middle, but now positives typically will be up and negatives will be down, um, as opposed to positives on the right, negatives on the left. Let's jump ahead. Opposite numbers. Opposite numbers are going to be the same number, but one is positive and one is negative. So you could do an example if you wanted to and say like 5 and negative 5. Or you could do like a 2 and negative 2. In order doesn't matter. You could say negative 3 and 3. But it's going to be the same number, just one's positive and one is negative. And where we get that is really just the same distance from 0 on a number line. And maybe I'll just scroll up a little bit, see if we can get it all on one page. But you can look here and see that negative 5 and 5, they're both that same distance away from 0. And same thing for the negative 2 is 2 to the left, positive 2 is 2 to the right. The reason I wanted to bring that up is that kind of fits the definition of absolute value. So when you have absolute value, in the parentheses I'm going to put the little sign that you have these two vertical lines, and then your absolute value will be of whatever is inside there. And the technical definition of absolute value is it's the distance a number is from zero on the number line. So technically, when we look at absolute value and you get like, oh, what's the absolute value of negative 2? Well, negative 2 is 2 away from the 0 on the number line, so it's 2. Or if you have absolute value of 4, well, 4 is 4 to the right of 0, so it's 4. 
Really the key is you take whatever is inside the absolute value signs, take that and make it positive. So negative two becomes a two. Uh, a lot of the people though, they'll see this here and they think it means give the opposite. But you just take what's inside, four is inside, make it positive. So just leave it as a four. So you don't change the sign unless it starts out negative. So that's it for our absolute value. And want to just make one last comment, and then we are done with the section. So distances on maps and things like that are always going to be positive. That'll come up in the homework. So kind of be looking for that, that distances will never be a negative distance, pretty much. All right, let me know if you have questions. Be glad to help you in class.